Hello and welcome to the Moncast, a podcast where we watch Pokemon and Digimon in tandem and discuss the similarities and differences that they share. My name's Sam. And I'm Stevie. And the score currently stands at 14 points each. And this time we're watching episode 29, The Punchy Pokemon and Return to Heightened View Terrace. <laughs> The first episode we are watching this time is The Punchy Pokemon. The gang spot a Hitmonchan and Ash attempts to capture it, only to find out it belongs to someone else, who is too busy focusing on winning a tournament for fighting type Pokemon that he's neglecting his family at home. His daughter asks Ash to beat her father in the tournament so that he can stop living his dream and be a responsible adult and spend time with his family. So Ash enters his prime open to the match. Brock also enters Geodude but fails miserably because it's not a fighting type Pokemon and makes no sense. Eventually, Ash wins in the final battle against Team Rocket, who have stolen a Hitmonlee and have been fighting dirty in order to win. Seeing Primate's potential, the guy, whose name I've forgotten because he's so irrelevant, just pretty much asks to have Primate from Ash because he's stronger than Hitmonchan. And Ash agrees because Primate is clearly his most powerful Pokemon, and why would he need strong Pokemon when he has the power of friendship? I think the guy was called Anthony. I forgot. I couldn't remember his name and I was not going to go back and check. I don't think it matters anyway. It really doesn't matter because it's not really about him. Apparently he's training all this time for this fighting tournament and just loses because of something dumb. Okay, so it starts off with Ash and Co. wandering along an empty path, as most episodes seem to do. And then they stumble across a Hitmonchan. Who's just there, just running for no reason. This opening's kind of odd. It just starts off with a road... Like a long road, and then you just see a Hitmonchan running up, and then there's the gang, and then Ash is like, I want to catch it. Yeah, and the narrator shames Ash by saying that Misty caught a Psyduck and Brock's caught a Vulpix, which they've have done incredibly easily. <laughs> but technically, they both haven't done those things. Misty didn't catch Psyduck, Psyduck just joined, and then Vulpix, he got given, so they didn't catch them. Ash caught another fighting type Pokemon, though. He got he got Primeape, so... Four episodes ago. Still, he's gone longer times without, without catching a Pokemon. He's gone much longer times. So, Ash decides to take Hitmonchan on in a boxing match using its Pikachu. Yeah, which I first thought was like, this is kind of dumb. He has a fighting type Pokemon. He has a flying type Pokemon, which is good against fighting. But instead, he uses Pikachu, and I'm so glad he used Pikachu. It is really cute. This little boxing Pikachu is amazing, and then it's got its special attack, which is Rocket Punch, where it fires both the gloves and then one of the gloves just turns into Pikachu holding the glove and punching. It's great. Should be trademarked by Team Rocket. It's clearly copyright infringement. But this startup is great because normally they'll have a little backstory for the people that are going to be focused on in this episode. So it'll be a person to Pokemon talking and then the gang will appear and then they'll be told the thing that we just learned. And then there's so much setup. But in this, it's literally, there's a Hitmonchan. Ash wants to catch it tries to fight it and it's like yeah this is kind of good it made me happy but then hitmonchan's trainer who's called anthony if i remember right he's so unimportant in this episode yeah he just runs up to his hitmonchan and they must have seen him off in the distance running up there's nothing in the way so they should have seen him chasing after his hitmonchan unless he was hiding for no reason just to see how hitmonchan copes in a fight against a tiny mouse yeah he just gets angry at hitmonchan for getting one punch landed on him one punch so yeah we see that the guy i'm gonna call him the guy the entire time <laughs> the guy then jogs off with his hitmonchan into the sunset or whatever he's doing because that's where he needs to go he's gonna go train at a gym and then out from behind a tree appears his daughter who is conveniently there and she says to the the gang that her dad spent so much time training for this tournament that he's not at home anymore and it's upsetting the family and everything and then i got upset because perv brock came back But then, he's not really a perv in this episode. He's not as bad as usual. He's kind of more flustered, which is kind of cute. He blushes a lot. Like, he's not being all like, hey, pretty lady, how are you? He's like, oh my god, we'll help you. Yes, we'll definitely help you. So it's nice to see, not perv Brock, but flustered. I don't know how to react because I'm around a woman, Brock, which is cute. So if if Brock's like that around women that that's kind of okay because he's not really being creepy towards them he just really wants to help them because he thinks they're really cute and in doing so he acts cute himself so they go to this gym and she shows them the poster for the p1 tournament the p1 tournament stands for pokemon number one (laughs) i'm like okay that's a bit tragic (laughs) it's kind of a, a lame name but also 
there's the D1 tournament in Digimon, which is like a, a V-Pet tournament that you can do and you can win special D1 V-Pets. So I'm just saying Pokemon's ripped it from Digimon. Yeah, and at first I was under the impression he had an actual Pokemon gym, but it's just a gym gym. I, I thought that he was like a, a gym leader because there are other gym leaders and you'll learn about something about that later on. But yeah, I thought this would be in the games when you go to Saffron City there's sabrina's gym and next to it there's a fighting gym where you go and you fight some people and if you win you get to choose between hitmonchan or hitmonlee and i thought this would be something like that because i think it used to be the gym or it used to be another pokemon gym where you could earn a badge but because of the psychic type pokemon they just can't beat them so they've become demoted to just a fighting type pokemon gym yeah it's not a pokemon gym it's just a gym for pokemon so the guy's daughter asks if they can basically beat him in the p1 tournament so that he can stop being so obsessed with this tournament and come back and spend time with his family which is understandable if he's not doing his fatherly duties that he might have but that doesn't make sense because whether he wins or loses the tournament the tournament will still be over so (laughs) he won't have to take part again until next year my problem with this is like if he wins the tournament great but now he's a defending champion so he's got to go back anyway if he loses, it's going to spur him on even more to go and train even more. And like a spoiler for the end of the episode is that he doesn't win, but Ash wins. So now he's just going to go and do it again. Like this hasn't solved the problem. He's still not going to be at home at some point because he's going to be training for this thing. In fact, it's slightly more exacerbated because now he's got two Pokemon to train for the, the P1 tournament. But we'll talk about that after. Ash says he's going to enter his Pokemon into the tournament and then someone says you don't mean Primate do you? And then it just hard cuts to footage of Primate beating the stuffing out of Charmander. I'm like oh oh so violent. Ash is going to enter Primate and Brock wants to enter Geodude. Do you know Geodude's type? It's a rock ground isn't it? Yes it is but this is the P1 tournament they say it's slightly after is that it's going to be a fighting type Pokemon for the tournament. Oh well I wonder how Geodude got in then. But you know what, what else is kind of funny? Do you know what rock types are really weak against? Oh, I don't know. Fighting types. Oh, that, that's really interesting. So if it gets punched maybe once by one of these fighting type Pokemon, it might just lose. Oh, that's a shame. You really should have thought this through. Does it make any sense? Like, I, I don't get why he needed to be in the tournament. He was the only Pokemon that Brock had with muscly arms. What? He's only got like a Geodude, an Onyx, Zubat, and Vulpix. Geodude's the only one with proper arms. It still was played for laughs on the uh, in the bits that he competed, so it's okay. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, but Anthony just comes up to him and is like, "You know what? You should surrender. Throw in the towel now." Just like, really? <laughs> is that your motivational speech for Brock? <laughs> just give up. Your Pokemon sucks. Yeah, don't stand the chance. To be fair, though, Brock should know about typing. If he's a rock-type gym leader, he should know what a rock-type's weaknesses and resistances are. You should also know that his rock-ground-type Pokemon isn't a fighting type, and the tournament organisers should also know this. But it's okay, he gets to be let in because he's a gym leader. And then it cuts to Team Rocket, who also want to join because they're goofs and they want the money to buy things, like food and clothes. Yeah, it's all about the all-you-can-eat buffet. At the end, that's what they want. But I'm like, Team Rocket is such goofs and it's amazing. And then they break the fourth wall again a, a little bit. I don't think I caught it this time then. When Jessie's dreaming of her thing, James says, I hate to interrupt your internal dream sequence. That's kind of breaking the fourth wall. He's aware that there's a dream sequence going on and it's great. And then we learn that only fighting type Pokemon can be in it. And then I'm like, okay, but fear, fear dude. So, And then they see the Hitmonlee and the guy with the Hitmonlee and then cuts to them exiting a cubicle dressed in his clothes i'm like wait did they did they rob that guy and you see him tied up i'm like they totally robbed that guy they did something actually evil they took a hitmonlee which is a lot rarer than a pikachu without a hitch i'm just saying if they go and like try and and kidnap other pokemon they're gonna succeed i mean it doesn't make sense why they don't have that hitmonlee later because they strictly speaking they they have the hitmonlee and they get blasted off but what happens to the hitmonlee then just keep it it's a good pokemon just keep it i would have thought that the hitmonlee would be able to work out that jesse and james aren't his trainer especially when they reveal themselves and it still fights for them quite often pokemon seem to have a sense about what the trainer's feeling or you know stuff like that actually there's an episode later on and i'm sure we actually get to it that explains somewhat how pokemon and trainers interact it's interesting what pokemon do to communicate with the trainers and stuff it's good it's good okay so the tournament starts and i've got a note that there's just a weird baby in the crowd 
in the audience there's someone holding a baby and it's got this massive head and these weird eyes and i don't know why i've I had to say that but i just feel like you should know that there is a weird baby in that audience i didn't see it though so no, i'm just have to imagine it it's fine just imagine a weird baby and then matt chops fighting primate isn't it and then it gets flung out of the ring but it uses seismic toss on primate and it spins it around for so long <laughs> so long whilst we get some exposition and then it gets thrown but it literally only falls outside of the ring yeah but ash dives underneath it to catch it yeah and i thought that was quite cute it didn't want primate to get hurt it okay ash didn't want primate to get hurt and then primate gets all watery eyed and cute and i'm like oh primate was so adorable i know it has feelings and wants to fight and then misty has to explain the exact thing that's just happened because it's her time to state the obvious ash helped primate so now it wants to fight for ash that's so great i'm like yeah misty we we just learned this as well you don't need to tell us it's okay it's okay though it's your turn we can work it out then primate beats Matt Chop, and then we have is it Hitmonlee versus Geodude? Yeah I think Hitmonlee kicks out Brock's Geodude and then he just takes a Geodude to the face and then the guy gives Brock the towel and says just give up now if you think your Pokemon's gonna get hurt so Brock throws in the towel picks up Geodude and goes Geodude are you okay and Geodude goes Geo and then Brock goes you don't have to apologize and I'm like he's probably not apologizing to you he's probably swearing at you this hurt this really hurt you don't have to apologize I'm not apologizing. Why would you do this to me? Geodude, are you okay? I hate you so much. <laughs> you don't have to apologize. I'm not apologizing. So then it's Hitmon Lee versus Hitmon Chan. And Team Rocket are being sneaky and they use some glue on Hitmon Chan's foot so it gets stuck in place. And then Hitmon Lee is beating it up, which, okay, but maybe it can defend the kicks. It just, it's not, it's just letting itself get hit. And then the guy's daughter jumps in the way, which is kind of stupid because you can get really hurt. And all also, it's a Pokemon battle. Just, that's what they do. Let them fight. And also, she wanted her dad to lose in the first place. But then the guy jumps in the way because in the time it takes for Hitmonlee to do one kick, she jumps in the way. There's a bit of a monologue. And then the guy jumps in the way. I'm like, okay, but he kicks like lots of times in a second. So then Hitmonchan loses and gets led off the ring. And I'm like, surely they would see that he's glued to the floor when they're trying to take him off the ring. And then they would have been able to know that there's some foul play going on. But no, they don't They don't seem to notice that he got glued to the floor. Because it's a foolproof plan. And then Team Rocket decide, okay, in for a penny, in for a pound. We've gone this far. We may as well reveal that we're Team Rocket. And then we get the motto. And the motto this time genuinely made me laugh. Because... Jesse and James have disguised themselves as someone called Giant, so Jesse's on James's shoulders. They take the outfit off, and then Jesse's being all serious on top, being all like, to protect the world from devastation, and James is underneath, just getting red in the face and dying a little bit, and it's great. Because she's like, the motto's not over yet, we're not finished, and he's just on the floor giving up because he can't take the weight anymore. And it, it actually made me genuinely laugh this time, so it's nice to see the motto is staying fresh. That was a really funny moment. So then Ash and Team Rocket are fighting with Primeape and Hitmonlee, and then we get Detective Pikachu, who's like, oh, there's a thing under there, let's, let's go see what's happening, and goes and finds a thing, and stuff happens, and Ash wins fair and square for once, which is great, but it's a shame it's not a badge, but oh well. It's a belt. Yeah, still. And then the guy, the guy's like, oh, your prime was really great. I'd love to train it. And I'm like, what? No, no. Why let him train it? He's like, I, could, I bet I can make your prime a real P1 champion. I'm like, it's already a P1 champion. It has the belt. <laughs> Stop this. What's going on? And then Team Rocket get blasted off. I don't care. But then it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, train my prime. I'm like, no, no. Why do this? <laughs> no, it's his strongest Pokemon. It's literally won something. All your other ones haven't won anything. Why are you doing this? And then Ash gives the guy the prime ape with... The belt, the champion Primeape, the award-winning Primeape, who was stronger than all the other Pokemon. So the episode was really enjoyable and really great up until the last moment. The ending just sucks. So Ash wins something fair and square with Primeape, and it's a very strong Pokemon. It is literally his strongest Pokemon. Pikachu, debatable, but it's his strongest Pokemon. And the guy's like, I want to train it to be this thing it already is, because it's clearly stronger than my Hitmonchan. And Ash is like, okay, I'm going to do that now. Here you go. I'll be back and see you later. No, you won't, Ash. You're never going to see it again. This is the same thing as Butterfree. It's worse than Butterfree. Do you know what's really annoying? Ash didn't even use Primeape in anything. He literally caught it, gets used in this, and then gets given to the guy. I've decided that I can't hate Primeape. Good. Can you hate Ash, though? It got an even worse deal than Butterfree did. It didn't even get anything. It literally got some emotion in this episode, and that was it. It got the episode where it was caught... And then it got the episode where it won some battles, won a championship, and then was left behind for no reason. And it bothers me. It upsets me so much. 
I mean, he doesn't get to even have kids. He just gets to slave away, constantly training, just to defend his title. So I would like to know your opinions on, on, on this episode. You can say your good points and bad points now, because that's basically the episode. They see a Hitmonchan, they go and do a fighting tournament. It's a genuinely enjoyable tournament. And then at the end, it sucks because Ash gets... Just gives his Pokemon away because that's what Ash does. Second, he gets a strong one or a half decent Pokemon, he just gives it away. Yeah, overall, I enjoyed the episode. It was good. It was an entertaining episode. And then the ending just makes no sense. There's no reason why Ash would just give away his Pokemon to train with this guy. He's literally just proved that his Primeape is the strongest out of that bunch. There was a Polyrath there and it beat Polyrath. This guy clearly isn't that good at training Pokemon if this freshly caught primate that's never been used before can beat his pokemon i'm irked by this episode i liked the episode but i don't like the ending the ending just soils it any notes on this episode i don't really have any more notes because i managed to chime in i suppose the one good bit near the end of the episode where pikachu came out and just ruined all of team rocket's plans to tamper with the match that was really funny and then he just wanders back out from underneath the ring and passes the trap to meowth it's like here you go have it back meowth's just like oh thanks pikachu Pikachu, that's great. And then, of course, it goes off. They get electrocuted and then blasted off into outer space. That was really funny. Yeah, Team Rocket are great. I don't think there's been an episode so far where they've annoyed me or upset me. Team Rocket's the only consistently good thing about the show, I think. The only downside to them is that they can make some of the episodes a bit samey. They do sometimes just turn up to be the problem for Ash to solve. Like in the last episode. Like, Ash would not have won that badge if Team Rocket didn't appear. In the Celadon episode, I mean. But they had to burn down a building. Yeah, Team Rocket's place in the plot is annoying usually but team rocket themselves are always just entertaining and goofy but anyway pikachu was my favorite thing this episode pikachu was great this episode he was really cute and really funny as well when he just went off doing his own thing because ash was ignoring him it's like ash there's a thing going on they're not playing fair oh i'm gonna do that thing where i'm gonna just fob you off because it's what happens in plots and pikachu's like fine i'll sort it out myself uh it's such an adorable little mouse my favorite thing this episode is primate specifically the face it pulls when ash saves it little watery eyed ah i get it now i get why you're a nice person because you help us and then it goes and fights for a split second it's just it's little adorable manky self again and then it goes back to angry violent rage monkey overall thoughts the conclusion sucks really put a downer on the rest of the episode but apart from that it was good yeah so i thought it was good i enjoyed the episode there wasn't much that i didn't like apart from the geodude bit obviously and the ending really upset me because i i honestly thought he had primate for a lot longer i didn't think this episode happened now because i i vaguely remember him giving someone primate but i wasn't sure if it was this episode or if there was a further one along but it's this episode and like okay but he's literally been with the gang for a couple episodes and hasn't been used once it, he was such a good pokemon as well does that mean that the next pokemon ash gets is going to get double the salt from you no i'm gonna give up on hating pokemon i'm not gonna hold grudges who do you think will be the next pokemon that he gets i have no idea what he's gonna get next i think maybe the next one he gets is a poison type but I'm excited to see the next one because I, I know a lot of the Pokemon he ends up getting in Kanto, but I don't know when he gets them. So I'm excited to know. I'm also hoping that they stay a little bit longer than one episode. <laughs> but yeah, I enjoyed this episode. It was good. It was fun. I liked it. Any final thoughts? Rest in peace, Primate. We will never see you again. You were here for five episodes and then you left. <laughs> you were in two episodes and the episode you got used in, you became a champion. And then Ash decided you weren't good enough. You needed to become better, apparently. You were a champion, but you weren't a champion enough. You weren't a real P1 champion, Primate. You just won that one P1 tournament. The second episode we're watching is Return to Heighten View Terrace. Back in the real world, the kids are at summer camp where their teacher tells them that it's been closed due to the weird weather. Elsewhere, my Otismon is hiding from the sunlight, setting up his new base, complete with luxury coffin, while his minions search for the 8th Digidestined using copies of the 8th Crest. The gang's dropped off at Titan View Terrace, where a Mammothmon, one of my Otismon's servants, is rampaging through the city. Garudamon takes it on and wins, but the fight brings back long-forgotten memories of a fight involving a Greymon that they'd all witnessed several years ago. They realise that they all lived on Titan View Terrace when they were younger, and saw this Digimon battle, and that the eighth child they're looking for must have seen it as well. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon, are the champions. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon. 
So the recap in this episode focuses so much on Gatomon, even though Mayotus wants the big bad. Like Ty says how Gatomon escaped and now they've got to go to the human world to go and stop Gatomon before she finds the eighth child. And I'm like, okay, but Mayotus wants a thing, remember? Mayotus wants the big bad one who you should really be focusing on stopping. Maybe not so much the cat. He's the big bad one that just gets everyone else to do everything for him. And then Ty says something along, along the lines of, uh, we've been gone less time than it takes to say you'd like a haircut. And then Mimi's like, I'd be upset if it takes that long to, to have a haircut or something like that. Yeah, it's at the start of the episode where they explain the whole time difference in more detail. Which is cool. I mean, we've learned that all the adventure that they've had so far has happened in such a short space of time. Yeah, like they, they say that my Otisman's actually only been there a minute longer than they have. Which is interesting because that means that Whilst they're in the human world, all that time that's happening in the digital world is happening a lot faster. So years and years and years must pass in the digital world whilst they're in the human world. Also, it means that my oldest mom didn't really get much of a head start. No, no. Which is an interesting concept. Time travel is an interesting concept in general. It's less time travel, more time dilation. Like, everything in the digital world is so fast that it just happens in a much quicker time. It's a bit basically like how the internet works and downloading and uploading speeds and everything. Everything happens quite quick. You can get information really quick from the internet. So it's kind of, it kind of makes sense, but it's, it's also, like, pretty cool that it, all the stuff that they've been through, time-wise has happened so quick that the time they're away from the digital world is amazing. Like, yeah, the amount of time they have away, it's got to have been years that have passed since Motors Monarch's army left, so it's, like, what's happening in the digital world whilst all this is happening in the human world. Of which we find out later on, but, you know, it'd be interesting to see from what they leave and what they come back to. I'd like to see what happened there. But now the race for the eighth child begins, and they start off by going back to the summer camp where they have to explain all of the Digimon to the teacher by pretending that they're all stuffed animals that they happen to find on the path and they're being good citizens and 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 taking them to kari so she can have them the teacher is quite a goofball yeah he does seem like a comedy character so they go back to the buses because they've got to go and pack because summer camp has been cancelled because it's no longer summer it is now winter and the buses have butterflies on them and i was like "Ah, is this an easter egg i suppose it makes sense in the in the in the japanese version but in the in the dub it doesn't because we don't have butterfly so then they're having a discussion about the amount of kids there are and sora says that there's got to be millions of kids in the world and biomon just doesn't get the concept of genetics and stuff and she just imagines lots and lots and lots of sora which is kind of cute because obviously with the Digimon. There's Biomon, but there could potentially be thousands of Biomon in the digital world, and they will look exactly the same. So Biomon just basically freaks out. Which is cute. And then Mimi's awful and pushes past Palmon. I'm like, no, why would you do this, Mimi? <laughs> Palmon's, like, the best. Why why you do this? Because Mimi's, like, the worst she just runs off after her friends i can understand dub lines i can i can forgive those because obviously they've enforced that those words upon her but her actions like just pushing palman out the way to go see her friends i can't i can't forgive that that's part of who she is and it upsets me i can either go and see my friends who i've not seen for months which yeah okay but they're also there but in those months i've literally met a living plant which can turn into a giant cactus i think i'm going to stick with a giant cactus can my friends turn into giant cacti no, they can't. So, you know. But she pushes her out the way and Palmon looks upset. And she goes and talks to her friends. And her friends are like, well, we saw you like 10 minutes ago. But they say that maybe she's had too much caffeine. I'm like, so she's either had coffee or does Mimi just chug monster energy drinks? I can't imagine her being that sort of person. It's a joke. I know, but it's a bad joke. It's a dub joke. Okay, well, they decide that they need to go to Heightened View Terrace. And the way they have to do that is ask their teacher to drop them off there. And... They're, they're trying to convince him and he's like no well, you've got to ask your parents no you can't really do this i shouldn't really do this and then matt and tk become little emotional manipulating people <laughs> and they start doing the this is where my parents were together and i just want to go and see the place and they start crying and i'm like are they actually upset i can't tell if they're actually upset and it turns out they're not upset they're just using emotional warfare and i'm like tk tk you evil person <laughs> You can tell they're pretending because Matt is displaying emotion. (laughs) Uh, Okay. The really sad thing is I'm being serious. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm laughing. It's not explained why they actually want to go to Hyde View Terrace. They just sort of decide, we need to go here because that's where the plot is going to be. That's where my Otis one is, and they need to stop my Otis one. How do they know that? I don't know. I can't remember. They don't have any actual reason to go there. They just decide, let's go. I forget why they need to go. 
Because plot convenience. Because they need the plot to happen, so they're going to go to the place where the plot is waiting. My plot senses are tingling. <laughs> so yeah, they take the bus and they get dropped off there, but at one point... The teacher wants to see the digivices, and so I was like, no, it's okay, I'll keep it, it's my thing. And then the guy's like, no, I want to have a look at it. And then, yeah, he looks at the thing, and then Ty makes a joke to Izzy about he thought he was a might be a Digimon. And then the guy tickles Ty, because why? <laughs> it's weird. I don't, I don't get it. And then it cuts to the, the darkest, broodiest car park ever. <laughs> I've got a note that says, no matter how evil Gatomon is, or how evil she's trying to be, she is adorable, because she is. And then underneath it says, uh, look at Mayotas Mon being all dramatic in a car park, because it's where him and his minions are waiting. Cause it, it pans across all these cars that are parked, and then down to like where they're at the bottom, hiding away. Oh, so they're actually just in a car park. Yeah. Yeah, they're like at the bottom floor of a car park, but somehow there's a pillar of light shining on the coffin, which makes no sense because he has to hide from it. But it looks cool. Yes, and that's why he's there, because he wants to be broody and mysterious. He needs to have all the vampire cliches. My version of the episode cuts off. He's saying something, and then like the last word he's going to say is die, but it just cuts off and cuts to like, the next scene, and I was like, the show is so done with him, they don't care what he's saying. So then Gatamon says that they've brought along Mammothmon, who will help them find the kids or whatever, and Mammothmon starts wrecking the place, and Gatamon says, they shouldn't have brought Mammothmon along because he's too loud and obvious. I'm like... Yeah, Gatamon's right, but also you said a couple of seconds ago that they've brought Gat- uh, Mammoth Mong along to help. I'm like, why? Surely stealth is an advantage at the moment. Maybe don't cause concern that I might get police involved. Plus, wasn't it Gatomon that organised all of my Otis Mon's forces in the first place? So she employed Mammoth Mon. Yeah, and now realises it's a bad idea. It is a bad idea. Who sends an elephant looking after children? Yeah, like, right, here's the thing. My Otis Mon has bats, right? If he took all those bats and gave them crests, he could fly around the entire of Odaiba in basically a day and find the kid. Instead, he's going to give it to a giant mammoth, things that live in the water, or other Digimon that can't travel as well as bats can, and expect them to do a good job. I'm like, stop this. Honestly, if you just did the work yourself, Mon, you would have the solution already. You, you would have solved it. No, he's got to brood in his coffin and be all mysterious and emo so the kids are talking about when they were in uh, height and view terrace and matt does a flashback to when they were younger because bird and mammoth are fighting and tk says there were two monsters and then he talks about when he was younger he remembered talking to his mom about there being two monsters and in the flashback their mom had brown hair even though she has blonde hair have you heard of this thing called hair dye yes but i'm just saying it's an inconsistency because i don't think they would have delved that deep enough and said oh we need to give her a character trait let's give her dyed hair this time and then never mention it again maybe her hair was dyed back then Maybe it was just the sepia tone or whatever they were using on the flashback. No, otherwise Matt and TK's hair would also be brown. It's an animation error and I'm calling it out. So then Bergamon digivolves into Garudamon and Sora's digivice is Ty's colour. Before that though, Bergamon actually says Sora. Okay. This is the Bergamon that has only ever made screeching noises before and it just straight up says Sora! Oh, no, it says Meteor Wing. Well, that's an attack name, so that doesn't count. Bergeron just makes screechy bird noises. It, it can't speak. Don't make it speak, please. I'm sure it speaks before. I can't remember it ever saying anything else. It only ever comes out for battles, so of course it's not said anything else. But this time it says Sora, and that annoyed me. <laughs> It's really weird. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, when Bergeron evolves into Garudaman, Sora's device turns into the same colour as Ty's, becomes orange and blue, which it shouldn't be, but it's it's orange and blue, and I'm like, oh, they just reused that, that piece of animation. And then we get to see some really badly remade shots of the prequel movie. They're not that bad. I didn't think there was anything really wrong with them. Compared to the prequel, they look bad. Well, they can't use the prequel shots because they're a different style altogether. But looking at Greymon, like the image of Greymon, it's like, oh, that looks a bit... It's just Greymon. I know, but it looks a bit weird and janky. Well, they are making it just for these flashbacks, so they're not going to put too much effort into it. Mm, I suppose, I suppose. Then I can hear the Hey Digimon coming from a mile away. (laughs) Yeah. It just starts, you're like, anytime it's an ultimate level, it's just, hey, Digimon, you're like, oh, no, 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 no. As soon as Bergamon digivolves to Garudamon, you know that hey, Digimon is going to be played shortly. But then Garudamon just murders Mammothmon and no one cares. Apart from Anjumon, this is the first time they've actually just killed a Digimon. They've killed Etamon before. Yeah, but that was 
more he got thrown into a thing and then he got sucked into a, a, a vortex so they killed shogun gekumon no he was still alive you could see him like in the rubble so he hadn't dispersed or anything so we don't know if they disperse they do in the in the digital world i suppose devimon did disperse when they defeated him but that's the only example i can think of but i suppose they've not really killed many garudamon just murders mammoth one and it's it's dead it's not like oh it's been defeated or anything. it's dead it's gone it's it's gone and no one cares all of the bystanders in this entire scene just don't seem to care they're only there to make awful jokes so many jokes even the ones running in fear are making jokes so they all come to the conclusion that they all saw that fight before and then izzy says so that's what we've all got this in common and then mimi says what that we all took french in school i'm like mimi you're right there you know exactly what's happening stop playing dumb you can see the fight you remember being in heightened view terrace when there was another monster fight so why are you like oh we all took french in school stop this stop this silliness is he just like completely scolds her for it as well but then they know that they've got to find the the, the eighth child who was at heightened view terrace at the same time they were there and saw the fight so now they must go and find him wherever he is and even motus one is saying that they need to find him and stop him before he can find the the digimon and stuff i wonder who it could be but they're purposefully trying to throw off the scent by saying he so much well, do you remember back in Home Away From Home? We're at the end of the episode. It said, soon Kari will be joining us on this adventure. I don't remember this. When was this? When was this thing that happened? You're not telling me that Kari is the eighth digesting child. You can't tell me that. I've got a sneaking suspicion. Are you sure? I'm 99% sure that she's going to be the eighth digestant. Well, she is shown in the ending credits with the cat and an angel, so... Ty has straight up said that she'll be joining them. <laughs> I know, but is it this time they're, they're meeting her? Maybe it's like the next time or something. We don't know. Maybe this is just another person. And she was in the prequel movie and saw the fight happen. Yeah, who knows? This joke is going to get very old very quickly. And I know it's going to last for like half this arc. But who knows who this child is? Nobody knows. If only the kids had watched Digimon, they'd already know by now. Or maybe that Ty could be like, well, Kari knew who Koromon was. Maybe we should go talk to, to Kari about this. <laughs> hey, Kari, you saw the battle before, right? You were like one of the, literally, potentially the one other person with a name who we know, who was literally there. You were on the Agumon's back. You were right there next to me. So, did you see it? You know how you know how there's a thing and we're looking for an extra person? Maybe it's you. No, it won't be. It won't be a girl. It'll be a he and we have to find who he is. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed this I enjoyed this episode a lot. We got places and did stuff. We went to places for no reason to work out plot. We went to learn plot. So. Here's more plot. Are you excited for all the plot? I'm excited for the plot. Plot's going to plot along. What was your favourite thing in this episode? Gatomon versus the dog. Because she just takes no crap from the dog. And she's like, the dog's there trying to be like, I'll, I'll fight you because you're a cat. And she's just like, no, cannot be bothered. Just hit it with a tail. It's not even attack. She's just hit it with a tail. It's got quite a heavy tail ring on it though. I wouldn't like to be hit in the face by a piece of metal. No, I would not either. What was your thing? All the Digimon not getting the real world. Yeah, it was cute. Especially uh, Beermon's idea of there being lots and lots of Sora. And them not knowing that they need to be quiet all the time. They're silly Digimon. But what are your overall thoughts? It was quite good. I liked it. I like the important plot points of talking about the original battle, which, if you haven't seen it, is kind of confusing, but also it reveals a little bit of information that they saw this fight before. So when you watch the movie and you see it at the start, you're like, it's the thing they talk about in the show. Whilst in the Japanese version, they watched the special mini prequel before the show. So it's cool. It's not explained everything to us. It says that there was this fight between Greymon and Paramount, but it's not extremely obvious what it was. So it's good. I liked it. Yeah, I agree. It was a pretty good episode. It had a few of the usual problems Digimon has, like bad dub jokes that have clearly just been put in to fill silence, and my Otis Mon being incredibly cliche. But he's going to do that all the time now, and I've come to terms with it. Yeah, my Otis Mon just is a cliche. He is. There was also the parts where it just did things to explain plot to us. Like when my Otis Mon comes out of his coffin and explains the plan to Gatamon, who's already started going out and executing the plan. It's like me explaining to you, okay, so we make this podcast, right? Where we talk about Pokemon, and then we talk about Digimon. Is that the thing that we release where we talk about Pokemon and Digimon, and we talk about the similarities and stuff? Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. You already know that's what we're going to do. I already know that's what we're going to do. But I'm going to explain it to you so that everyone listening knows that that's what we're going to do. 
Let's record the podcast that we release two episodes a week where we talk about Pokemon and Digimon in Tandem because of the similarities and differences. Yeah. It was dumb. Yeah, I liked it though. It was a good episode. Yeah, apart from that, it was good. It set off the arc in a reasonably good direction, I hope. Now it's time for Mono A Mono, where we talk about the similarities and differences in these episodes. So let's start with our Monsters of the Week. My Monster of the Week is Primeape, because he really got a bad deal, didn't he? He did. Just caught in an episode, not used, used once, was really good and really successful, gets given to a stranger, because, yeah, that's how it works. A stranger that can't even train a Pokemon very well. No. It goes out in the semi-finals. I'm going to train this Pokemon to be the, the P1 champion, which it already is. So I did it. Yay, look at me. I'm the best. It doesn't have to go. They don't even try and make up a reason. They just give him away for no reason at all. Like the next couple episodes, I'm going to watch and see times when Primate would be really useful. And Butterfree. Well, Butterfree's been useful in a lot of episodes. Yeah, but we need to keep track of all the Pokemon that would have been useful. So let's see, how many Pokemons he's had so far? Eight, is it? Two of which he's gotten rid of. If you count Haunter, then Haunter's been and gone already anyway. I don't count Haunter, actually. I'm not going to count Haunter because he didn't really catch Haunter. He's had eight Pokemon in Pokeballs, two of which he's given away. And considering the tagline, he's got to catch them all. He's like, um, okay. Got to catch them all and then get rid of them every so often to clear up team space. Who do you think is going to go next? No one. I think these five are going to stay in his team all the time, and the sixth slot is just going to be rotated constantly. We'll have to see if you're all right. What was your monster of the week? Mine is Punchy Pikachu, because it's super cute. It is. It's tiny, and he's got tiny little boxing gloves, and they expect him to fight a fighting-type Pokemon. It's like, uh uh-huh. No, he's not going to win. He was really adorable in the episode. And even the, like you said earlier about um, Pikachu going away and finding the explosion machine or whatever it is. It's all cute. It's taking its own little initiative to do what it wants to do. Yeah, the explosion machine that once it went off would have quite clearly given away that they were cheating. (laughs) Do you think the judges would have noticed an explosion? Yeah, I also thought they would have noticed the glue on, on Hitmonchan's foot, but no. They won't. Explosion, much more noticeable. Did you know that Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee are named after Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee? Yes. Oh, well. Hitmon, because they're monsters that hit. Jackie Chan, because he's famous for more punching-based martial arts. And then Bruce Lee is famous for his kicking-style martial arts. That's a fun factoid. Yes. Which episode do you think had the best storyline? It was really difficult for me. Because I enjoyed them both for different things. I like Pokemon's idea of there being things that aren't just gym battles. And I did like how it's basically a fighting tournament and they go and enter that for an episode and it was quite fun. So I'm going to say Pokemon, but I didn't enjoy the ending. Yeah, the ending doesn't tie it up in a nice knot. But I agree, the Pokemon storyline was better. Mainly because it did flow properly. They didn't just decide, I'm going to go to this championship now for no reason. It sort of synced up quite well because he obviously saw Hitmonchan and was like, like the, the, like I said, the opening was so quick. There was just a Hitmonchan running and then Ash is like, I want to catch it. And then they get given the plot instead of what tends to happen is a plot is happening. The gang see it and they get themselves involved in it. Like with missing kids and Ash is like, yeah, I'm going to solve this mystery. It's like, no, kids are disappearing. You can't get involved in this. This is out of your depth, 10 year old child. This is more, uh, they've been asked to help. And they did. And it was good. Whereas Digimon's was just more set up for the rest of the arc. Any similarities? The only thing I could come up with is that there was a lot of focus on fighting taking place. Apart from that, there isn't that much in common. Yeah, no, my theme this week's really abstract and it's just good episodes because honestly, the last couple of batches of episodes we've been watching have been a little bit boring or a little bit eh. And even if we'd had like one good episode of Pokemon, Digimon would suffer or vice versa. But this time, they've been two good episodes and I've really enjoyed both episodes. Yeah, I've enjoyed watching the last four episodes or so. Two of each have been good. So yeah, this is the first time in a while that I've enjoyed literally both episodes. And it's going to be really difficult to decide a point winner this time. Oh, one more similarity actually that I just thought of. Bad endings that make no sense. Pokemon ends with him getting rid of Primate for no reason. Digimon ends with them not working out that Kari is quite clearly the eighth child. Yep, so which one did you enjoy the most? I'm going to say Pokemon. I found it really difficult because I like, like, Team Rocket's motto was great and I genuinely laughed at it. And then the whole group, like, remembering all of this stuff that happened before they met 
you know, it was all quite good. I said that Pokemon loses points because of the whole Primeape thing, but apart from that, I, I think I enjoyed that the most. So, yeah, I think Pokemon's going to get the point this time. Yeah, it was a really strong episode of Pokemon. The ending does let it down, but the ending is only one part of the overall episode. Digimon's was just fine. A lot more jokes fell flat in Digimon than they did in Pokemon, because Pokemon's was based a lot more on things happening than it just being straight up puns or just jokes you don't get as much physical humor in digimon or ways that the characters act in digimon aren't usually as funny pokemon seems a little bit more random especially things like pikachu just with boxing gloves firing the boxing gloves at hitmonchan stuff like that pokemon's much less constrained what it can do to try and keep it entertaining it's quite happy to break the rules of reality like brock and misty just having a ring bell that they've used to start the match between hitmonchan and pikachu like, it doesn't explain where it came from, but it's funny because they just used it there for a gag. Pokemon's usually just funnier than Digimon. Especially Team Rocket. I definitely think they bring a through line of humour into the show. Definitely. Which is good, because that's what they're there for. Digimon has to take itself much more seriously. Especially my Otis one, who takes himself so seriously, even though he's not. It's the most serious character. So that makes it 15-14 to Pokemon. Join us again next time where we'll be watching episode 30. Almost home free and sparks fly for Magnemite. Ooh, 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 yay. You can listen to more of us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher where we like getting reviews and comments. And you can message us via our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, with the world thread and email, which are all linked in the show notes. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Butterfree. Primeape. Oh no. <laughs> Should I just list them off every time? All the Pokemon that Ash has got rid of for no reason? No, because you'll end up with like a fairly long list by the end of the season. Yeah, but it'll reset when we move on to the next series of Pokemon. I can't think of the worst letting go Pokemon that he does. I think Butterfreeze was definitely the worst, because the entire episode was just, I'm going to get rid of Butterfree. Primates was out of the blue. Primates was just, yeah, you won. Your, your prize is to not be around me. Your prize is this guy gets to adopt you. This guy who spends all his time with his Pokemon and neglects his family. You get to be with him. So he can continue neglecting his family. <laughs> He's going to raise you to be a, a P1 champion, even though you're already that. Anyway, the episode's supposed to be over now. Bye. It is. asks Ash to beat her. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Sorry, that was off. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Let me re-say, re-say these words. <laughs> what? Oh, that was the best. Sorry, I burped. I've just had a sip this of water. Go- no, this goes in the outtakes. <laughs> just, his daughter asks Ash to beat her. <laughs> to beat her. <laughs> it's the only way I could feel anymore. Kinky. <sighs> oh, I'm going to kink shame someone. Okay. Neither of us wants to start talking no, about No, because I, know, I always start it, and you said in a tweet the other day that you're always worried that I you don't talk enough, so I'm going to stop <laughs> it. I'm going to let you talk today. Oh, God, this is going to go horrendously. <laughs> one punch! Oh, my God, could the title of this episode be One Punch Mom? <laughs> Wait, that's Cowboy Bebop that I was just doing. Oops. Good enough, good enough. Um, Yeah, can the title of this episode be called One Punch Mom? Yes, it can. Thank <laughs> you. Because it's a, it's the Punchy Pokemon episode. I'll put that in the spreadsheet right Yay. now. Yay! forget I'm so happy for that oh oh skype's gone skype why you disappeared please work bye bye stevie do 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 oh my phone's telling me i was asleep between uh, four o'clock and one o'clock yes i was <laughs> tweeters, there we go the tweeter it's on the tweeter oh sharks thousands and thousands of sharks it's upsetting what are, oh. what are you on <laughs> it's awful Hello, you're back. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, I'm on Twitter and Homo Neurotic just shared, well, an hour ago, shared a tweet with a gif of, oh, it's got to be hundreds of sharks swimming and it gives me anxiety because I hate deep water and the idea of hundreds of sharks being in deep water scares me. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, so you've not gone crazy. <laughs> uh, well, that's debatable. <clears throat> All I heard was just tweet her. Thousands and thousands of sharks. 
That's fine. I've just gone a bit mad. Cat music number meh. Three. Three. <laughs> number meh. 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 meh is my lucky number. Meh is a magic number. <laughs> now it's time for meh no a meh no. <laughs> that doesn't work. Join us again next time or we'll be watching episode 29. No. Is it not? Is it 30? 29 at 1. What, it's 30 already? Yeah. We've oh, just God. covered episode 29. <laughs> okay.